Okay. It's going to let me set my timer. Right, Charles, ready when you are. Um, this is our presentation on the institutions and audiences. Um, I'm Daisy Manley. I'm John White, but unfortunately Henry Wood cannot be with us today. <laughs> Um, so, we can start with the relationship between the audience and the industry. This was a topic that Henry was uh, researching, <laughs> but we'll do our best to cover it. In 1922, the BBC was established itself as the main broadcaster in the UK, but the interaction between the audiences at this point was only a um, yeah, it was a one-way system at the time, um, due to the recent developments in technology. Back then, it was there was only really, there wasn't mobile phones or any way to connect between the um, <coughs> connect instantly between the listener and the producer. Um, and now, through developments of technology, it's become a two-way system between the audience and the producer. So they can connect through um, mobile phones, um, texting, calling in. Um, and the internet is a large part of it as well. Um, the development of the internet, for example, Facebook, which currently has over 1 billion active users, so that's a good way for the audience to interact with the producers. Um, Twitter also has over 200 million users. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and there's obviously MySpace as well. It's yeah. being relaunched. As it has been relaunched. And you have podcasting where um, the audience stops being just consumers and they start producing their own content. It's really easy and simple to do. You have many types of uh, websites you can create on. You have SoundCloud, you have MixCloud, you have the older websites like Podomatic that puts you straight onto the iTunes. And you have big um, companies like Audible who aren't just providing a platform to, um, to post podcasts. They're actually funding podcasts, which could be, um, in some ways, the future of radio. Really simple to do. Anyone can do it. I have a little podcast that I do most Friday nights. Um, and it's the change from being consumers and producers to merging together as being prosumers. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the improvements in technology have contributed to the um, creation of the word like prosumers, where the consumers and the developers have come together. Um, this is um, due to the development of technology within the radio, such as uh, <laughs> and the development in the actual radio. So the, the, now there's things such as car radios, um, the DAB radio, <laughs> and also the, back in the 60s, something that had a huge impact on the audiences um, due to technology was pirate radio, which is um, which was the development of um, <coughs> like large, smaller transmitters that can be broadcast from out of city, which is another development in technology, and um, it brought about a new era of radio that um, catered to an audience that the BBC at the time wasn't catering to, so that had a huge change on the radio industry. Um, local, regional and international radio is the next subject, we're going to look at. Um, <laughs> um, local radio is mostly aimed at older listeners. Um, it's um, regulated by Ofcom to have to include programmes of local radio and locally made programmes. Um, there's one such as Fire FM, which is the one in former, uh, BBC Solon, which is Southampton, and um, Fantasy Radio, which is in Wiltshire. Um, regional radio is quite new to the radio industry. Um, it was, it's obviously radio that covers a certain region, so like the South or like North, wherever. And the, that's um, been in Ofcom. The top two rated regional radio stations are Capital FM and Heart FM. <coughs> and finally, national radio which is a radio station that covers the whole of the country. So like, for example, BBC Radio 1 is all over um, the UK. And 
Right, so audience fragmentation and, and um, audience creating our own content. We've covered in, uh, before the change of relationships from producers and consumers to producers. <coughs> but fragmentation. Audience fragmentation. Uh, the thing about fragmentation is there is only going to be a certain number of audience participants that will listen to a certain type of programme. Fragmentation is changing, and because there's, there's much more choice now than ever before, especially with DAB digital radio and with internet radio. But um, uh, Jane Burford, head of BBC Comedy, um, when talking about uh, ideas for, 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 for programmes, said that they don't want to fragment their audience, so they support the um, support so idea. In an institution like the BBC, they don't want repetition of ideas. So if you pitch a um, panel show, on BBC Radio 4 um, that it could be seen as similar to um, QI, they're not likely to pick it up. But they are likely to pick up something like the Museum of Curiosity, which is made by the same in-house production company, which ties in but isn't the same format of the programme. And, and like I said, because it's now a global market and with apps like um, Tune in radio, no, you're not just restricted to what's in your country. You, you have a whole global, uh, whole global area in which you can listen. And, you know, ten, the tensions between tiers of radio. In the beginning, that with the in like in 1922 with public service broadcasting, there's very, very little tension. Um, uh, it was on its own, there was no competition, very little problems, and the audience that were going to listen to the radio, their total audience, if they were going to listen, they were going to listen to that one station. There was no fragmentation of the audience. And then in the... Uh, 72, you had the change in allowing independent local radios, ILRs, but you didn't have capital until 1973 and the London Broadcasting Company as well, at LBC. <coughs> um, the tension is now created because they're both transmitting to the same audience over the same areas, and um, especially with um, BBC Local Radio only being set up in um, only a few years before that in 1967. And, um, but they were pushing boundaries local radio to begin with, with things like um, in Nottingham they had held the first phone call so we're trying to make themselves different from the um, the light program and the world service, uh, world service um, and the home service in uh, the, the stories and in the way they and allowing interaction for the first time. Um, the reason the in 1973 the government said that deregulation they hoped it would stimulate competition, increase efficiency, and widen consumer choice. That's not. There's arguments about whether this happened or not because of the restrictions that were placed on ILRs. They could only, um, they had to transmit um, certain type, they had to transmit within their, their very tight remits at the time, which were to, um, they had to do so many um, hours of spoken radio. So, so um, things like Radio City at the time in Liverpool, they would have to do radio dramas. Um, which I believe was a Tuesday night. Um, it wasn't until 1990 when they really changed the deregulation and allowed um, restricted service license and later in the 2001 you had the radio authority around the access radio scheme which later became community radio. This is around small stations and it offers um, FM opportunities for hospital and student radio and it was the first time that um, minority stations, uh, like in the area I'm from, there's a station called Hastings Rock, which runs two weeks a year, but aims its content at a very niche audience, and they do big publicity for, for two or three um, months before and after. And the current issues um, with the BBC is you've had, um, in the last couple of months, you've had Global Radio have taken over the Guardian Media Group, um, which uh, is, being, is still being investigated by the Competition Commission um, because uh, they're saying it's not allowing 
choice because they're taking over things like um, 2CR, which was, I think was in Bournemouth, and that's now become a heart or a capital. But what's very interesting is on when on Thursday when the radio results came in, they're actually seeing a huge loss over their network in total. Although they've bought more stations now covering a wider area, they're actually losing listeners in the heart and capital brands. So um, they're, they're, there's now an argument should they stop doing it because there's, they're, they're saying there's too many similarities between the capital and the heart stations and they're wondering whether to move the other station brand that they own, which is XFM, which is mainly Manchester and London at the moment, whether that can become a brand that they move out over the, um, the place, and, uh, over, over the country, and you have uh, BBC beginning to change its form from local radio to regional, uh, or even national. You had Mark Forrest posted a secret BBC pilot programme at, um, on, 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 at the end of December, and but now it's become a, it's now part of the regular scheduling as the seventh uh, of January and. It's, um, it's sort of getting people ready for the idea that local radio is going to be less local. And it's, I think it's quite cleverly done. It's done with, like, in a magazine style. And they um, cover the best local stories across the country. Thank you for listening on that. Any questions? Thank you. Can you stop your clock? Stop my clock. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned about the fragmentation, yes. um, particularly I'm thinking in the commercial sector. Yeah. What do you think from your research are the challenges of fragmentation? As in, you talked about it from the consumer's perspective of having more choice. Yeah. What are the challenges of it? The challenges for the, for the station? The, the challenges for the radio industry of all this fragmentation? Um, it's, you were saying something earlier about... No. If there's more radio stations catering to, they're all catering to different um, audiences that all want different things. So it means, and the, one of the good points is that it means that everyone is catered to, but at the same time, the more radio stations there are, the more competition there is between um, I each think of the. Uh, <coughs> the argument that, 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 that's being brought up now is um, with, with fragmentation is, is if a niche station starts doing very well. How, how do they manage it? I, I, I think um, uh, with the radio results coming out, Six Music has done incredibly well on the DAB service, and um, the, and there's there, there's an argument which was brought up a while ago, back in the last quarter when it did well again, when it did well there, and it's done well again, and it's whether the BBC should be putting something like BBC Three, which still has an audience and still is popular, but um, they're saying that six is, is that it's losing audience, it's fragmented by BBC Radio 2, because two is available on FM, and they're saying that should six be bought onto FM in place of something, not necessarily what they think is as popular as BBC <coughs> Radio 3, but there's, um, but there's, um, there, there's, there's a difficulty there because the BBC does need to cater to niche audiences, which isn't an issue in in um, in commercial circles. But if you think of something like jazz, yeah. well, I don't mind. It'll be called smooth now, isn't it? Uh, you know, a specific station for a specific music. You yeah. know, what's the challenges of running a station like that? I mean, in the commercial world. Ooh. It's a very, that's a very small, a very small proportion of the audiences was listening to jazz. Like those that there probably is a large audience for it, but in generically, I think. A huge part of the audience, like radio audiences in general, wouldn't be that interested in listening to jazz. Whereas What's the problem if you have a low audience then? Well, you can't find yourself, and the advertisers will pull out. That that's worst case scenario. But um, uh, classic, which is very niche, does, <coughs> does incredibly well, um, playing popular, um, popular, well, well, well known classical music. Things that people who aren't classical lovers recognise. And, and the shows that are starting to do well with younger presenters where they l link it through. But it, it is a real issue that if um, you, if, because the real classical lovers, if they will go online to a, a site that will play them the classical music that they want. It's, it's a 
very is a very tricky position to be in. Okay. Uh, Daisy, you said that uh, regional radio was quite new. What do you mean by that? That's what's quite new. Um, like it's to the radio industry, it's like not some. Whereas, like for example, the BBC has been around doing radio one since the sixties. Whereas things like um, I can't remember what radio station is this now. <laughs> you were talking about Martin <coughs> Capital. Oh um, yeah, they haven't been obviously capitalised, but like hasn't been around for quite as long. Whereas Capital was around, but it wasn't around in a, in a regional capacity at the time. It was just as a London based. Uh, okay, so can you put a date on when these regional stations started to appear? Um, I think the capital was in the 70s, isn't it? Yeah, but that was Early the regional 70s. Stage. Well, I don't know when it came as a okay. regional station. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all the pledge of torment now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should we retire to Studio 2 now? Oh, I have to move again now. Yeah, Up, down. Okay. Thanks, it's nice to meet you guys. Uh, sorry, I hope it wasn't too painful. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure we've got worse to come to. Which bit was your um, <laughs> what bit was your missing link meant to do then? Oh, my first bit. It was all mixed up, really. So, so it was like a bit of 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 a to try and bargain him with his bits to try and <laughs> challenge. Yeah. We had his slides, but not his notes. So. Give, him a, give him a bash. <laughs> 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 Did you get my torrent of